shame on you, shame on you for what you did to him. And may Allah grant him the highest heaven, Jannah to Firdaus. I mean, he is Shaheed. And those who kill him are going to be in the hellfire. Because this is not Islam. This is not Islam. And we've just got the report that they beheaded another one and dragged his body through the streets. I do not know as yet if this is a correct report, but it came from the Iranian uh, um, press TV, I think it's called. Just came in. If this is also true, then shame on them. Shame on them. Shame on them. And so the masajid are going to be barricaded now because these people have a, a thirst for blood in them that they will do anything. They're getting into a frenzy now. I don't know whether they're going to come after me as well. They're getting into a frenzy. Their blood is boiling. They, can do, they cannot accept anything else except victory that we have to bring down the Syrian regime. So you're dealing with the people who have gone mad. When Nabi Isa al-Islam returns, these two are going to be in the masjid, two main actors of Akhir al-Zaman, and the third one will be outside, namely the Antichrist. Every Eastern European Christian knows about the Antichrist, the Jal, the false messiah. And so all three actors of Akhir al-Zaman, three main actors of Akhir al-Zaman, individuals that is, Gog and Magaga, groups. These are three main actors of Akhir al-Zaman are all going to be in the same place, in Damascus. And so the struggle for Damascus is intricately linked with Akhir al-Zaman, the end time. And Russia has to be very careful. I mentioned in my last lecture that there is a methodology for the study of the Quran which allows us to recognize multiple meanings for the Quran. That an event took place and the Quran referred to that event, but that does not restrict it to that particular moment in space and time. That the Quran can have other applications as well. And I pointed out to you the, the verse which, in which Ibrahim Islam, or Father Abraham, was commanded to sacrifice his son his only son. At that time, only Ismail Islam was his son. Nabi Ishaq Islam was born later. But that's a difference between us and you, which we attribute to the changes to, which took place in the Torah. I have a book entitled The Religion of Abraham and the State of Israel, a view from the Quran, in which I have offered a Quranic explanation of these problems that exist between us. It is at that time when uh, Nabi Isa al-Islam returns and uh, the uh, attack takes place uh, that um, we will see forces unleashed which will uh, take us to the end time. Russia has to be very careful because if an attack takes place on Syria and Russia is lured into the war our understanding of the Quran is that the verse of the Quran which is located in Surah to Rum or the Surah which is named after the Eastern Orthodox Christians which begins with the verse Guli Batil Rum, Rum has been defeated. But then goes on to say, Wahum min I mentioned in my last lecture that this actually took place at that time while the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, was alive. The Rum was defeated. And then within Bid'ah Sinin, three to nine years, Rome overcome, overcame the Persian Empire and emerged victorious. And I suggested that this is going to be repeated in the end time. That when Russia is baited into this war, which is coming, which is around the corner, 
while so many of the scholars of Islam are either asleep or drinking tetari, I don't know why, they will not comment on contemporary affairs using the Quran and the Sunnah, I don't know why. When Russia is baited into this war, and the Russians are ready and willing, when President Vladimir Putin was flying back from the conference in Durban, at three o'clock in the morning he gave the order for a uh, naval exercise in the Black Sea. Three o'clock in the morning. And Russia is going to be lured into the war. And we are standing at the doorstep now of that great war, which is going to lead to many other wars. The message we have to send to you today, if our interpretation of the Quran is correct, is that you should not be dismayed by any initial setback or defeat. But that if I we are correct, that you will eventually overcome the NATO forces. And that victory will come at the time when you join with us in that alliance, and that alliance conquers Constantinople. This is what Prophet Muhammad has prophesied, Allah's blessings be upon him. He has prophesied that we will conquer Constantinople. It is time for Turkish Muslims to listen to me dispassionately. Put aside all your nationalist fervor and listen with, 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 with thinking intact. That the conquest of Constantinople prophesied by Nabi Muhammad has not as yet taken place. It is still to come, and at that time when it comes, and every Turkish Muslim, every Turkish Muslim which who despises, despises Turkish membership in NATO, which despises Turkish military alliance with Israel, which despises Turkish um, economic ties with Israel, where we were buying so many weapons from Israel. You despise that and you are opposed to Zionism. Every Turkish Muslim will on that day join in the army, about which the Prophet said, you'll most certainly conquer Constantinople. And what a wonderful Amir or commander that will be. And what a wonderful army that would be of which he will be the commander, which will conquer Constantinople. Not only would the Turkish Muslims be members of that armed force, which will conquer Constantinople, those Turkish Muslims which despise NATO, but the whole world of Kurd, the Kurdish people who have been oppressed, those Kurds who have been oppressed and who still like Salahuddin Ayyubi have the love of Islam in their hearts, all of them are going to be part of that army and will jointly struggle to liberate Constantinople. The liberation of Constantinople is part and parcel of the grand scenario which will witness Rome being victorious over its, ally, over its enemies. And the victory of Rome spells the end of Israel. And so we end our talk on Syria, Russia and Akhir Zaman, pointing out that this is not the whole story, but we'll reveal it or we'll analyze it bit by bit in the days and months, the weeks ahead, inshallah. We hope and pray that you will now go to the website where the whole lecture is going to be placed and that you will carefully consider the comments that you make, that you will make scholarly comments, well thought out comments, so that you will add, add to the intellectual richness of the discourse and that you will ask questions not frivolously but seriously and that we will be able to delete all the frivolity and all the obscenity and vulgarity. And at, inshallah, I promise you that I will from time to time intervene in the discussion 
to respond to comments being made, to respond to those who differ with me, and I always, always benefit from those who differ with me. I never seek to stamp out <laughs> opinions that are different from mine. Not at all. That's not my way of scholarship. And I will also attempt, inshallah, to try to answer your questions. And may Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.